So how did I get started um, in my career? I was in law enforcement for 11 years. So I was a jail officer. I began my career in 2008, and I worked at the jail until 2010. And I went to the sheriff's department. I was the master deputy sheriff for eight years. So I left law enforcement in July of 2018. Now I am a criminal justice instructor at Amelia Nottoway Technical Center. All right, so this presentation um, or no information here today is on the behalf of any law enforcement agency. Um, it is not to be misconstrued with any, as any legal advice. This is just for your information. Hopefully it's some information that will help you stay safe while you're doing your loan signings and general notary work. Today you're going to induce or enhance your safety mindset while you're at loan signings. Uh, we're going to give you some safety tips that you can use uh, before, during, and after loan signings at mobile notary appointments. So why do bad things happen, right? We all know that bad things happen to great people. Why do they happen? Well, the formula that we were always taught in law enforcement is that when you have an opportunity and a means, that's when the incident occurs. So our job is to take away one of those building blocks, right? So if we take the opportunity away, the incident cannot happen. If we take the means away, the incident cannot happen. So that's our job. And so as long as you know that and you're staying safety conscious, you can prevent something from happening to you, right? We have a purpose, right? And so what I have to do every morning when I wake up, I, I have a purpose, I have a plan. That keeps me in line and that might prevent something unnecessary from happening to me today. And so what we used to learn in law enforcement was that when you carry yourself in a certain way, when you walk with a purpose and you had a mission, people can sense that. It's a vibe that you give off. And so they may be like, okay, all right, well, she, she don't look like she, she's not the one. Let me go pick somebody else who's distracted, who's unorganized. Believe it or not, mindset is everything. And so what we learned in law enforcement, mindset and communication saved our lives, right? So when should the notary signing agent or mobile notary become safety conscious? Is it before the signing? during the signing or after the signing? Should be before, okay. How many say before? All right, how many say during? How many say after? If somebody said all of them, all three. <laughs> and so the answer is you should become safety conscious before, but you should remain safety conscious throughout the entire process. You should never let your safety go by the wayside. But a lot of times we get caught up in the day to day and we forget. It's just human nature. You, the safety is the first thing that goes out of the window. All right, but we know that safety consciousness should begin at the time you receive that order confirmation, right? So you want to collect as much information as possible before the signing. And what we know is that those order confirmations come packed with information, right? They give you the date and time of the signing. They give you the borrower's name. They give you the address of where you're going. And they also give you the type of signing to be conducted. You know, do some background, you know, research before you get there. Is it early in the morning versus late in the evening, right? Does that matter? Absolutely. And we know this time of year, it may not be that big of a deal because it stays, you know, light outside to like 9 o'clock at night. But what happens when you go back into the fall and it gets dark at 5 o'clock? You know, so that, that may make a difference, right? All right, what about Monday versus Friday? Does that make a difference? Absolutely, especially if Friday is like the first of the month, right? <laughs> so it does make a difference because Monday, they're just getting over the weekend and trying to get integrated into the week. But on Friday, it's like, hey, party over here, happy hour, and your signing is at 7, and they just left Applebee's from happy hour. You know, so it makes a difference, right? All right, what about the borrower's name? Do you recognize the name of the borrower? Most of us that we do loan signings, I've never had a loan signing where I'm like, oh, yeah, I know this person. You don't know anything about them, right? Which means that you're walking into someone's home that you know nothing about. You're going in blind is what we say in law enforcement. So, but how many of you watch the news? Do y'all watch the news? Yeah. Yes, I watch the news all the time. <laughs> all day long I'm watching the news. I have the news apps on my phone, so I'm constantly staying in the know. So say for instance, if I have a loan signing in a certain part of town, right, and I'm at work and the signing is at 6 p.m., and something happens in that neighborhood, right, am I still going to go there? If you're not watching the news and staying in the know, how would you know? You're going to run into something that you have no clue what's going on. Actually, what's going on could have happened at the location that you're supposed to be at tonight, right? And so I always ask my students in my class, I say, hey, how many of you read the newspaper in your local area? They're like, I don't read the newspaper. What, well, you know, probably, somebody probably said, what is the newspaper? And so I said, hey, well, guess what? If you read the paper 
last night, you would have seen that right here at your back door is like a list, a whole page of crime that's happening right here in your neighborhood and you know nothing about. Because she's like, yeah, my family, we leave our doors unlocked to the house. I don't even have a house key. We leave our, you know, our doors to our vehicles unlocked. You know, my credit card's in there, my driver's license in there. And I said, well, if you read this paper right here, 90% of the crimes were vehicle theft, larcenies, people breaking into vehicles, which they really didn't have to break into because y'all left them unlocked, right? <laughs> but if you read the newspaper, you would know that. So I said all that to say, you need to read the newspaper. Know what's going on in your community. How many of you guys in here read the newspaper and know what's going on in your community? Do y'all stay abreast on what's happening? Great. All right, what about social media? So you can put the person's name in and maybe, you may not, you don't want to, I wouldn't want to add them as a friend, <laughs> right? But, you know, you can at least put in their name and see what pulls up, see what kind of photos, but what do people put on social media? Everything, what they ate for dinner last night, what they ate for breakfast, who their friends are, where they're going, where they just came from. So everything is on social media, which has proven to be really awesome for law enforcement, right? Because we've been able to do a lot with someone's social media page. And then through the um, sign, the order confirmation, you're able maybe to determine if it's a single party signing or dual signing. And then you can find out what type of neighborhood they live in. Because you can take that address and put it in what? Uh, put it in Google Maps, at least know where you're going. Um, again, but what part of town? Is it a high crime area or, you know, a, a area with little to no crime? So that may make a difference. All right, and then the type of signing. The type of signing makes a difference because it's a time thing, right? So a refinance versus an equity line of credit. So how long does a refinance normally take you? At least, 40, at least 45 minutes to an hour versus a line of credit may only take you, what, 15, 20 minutes, right? So is it a loan application or a refinance? And we know loan applications can take forever. So that'll give you some type of time frame to think about, okay, I'm going to be here for a while. So if I'm going to be in this person's home for a while, then where I'm going is totally important, right? All right, what about if you're signing a will? We know wills, you know, they have their witnesses and everything together. It's not going to take that long. Power of attorney or I-9 verification, those things are fairly simple, cut and dry. So you know that with those, you're probably not going to be there that long. So those are some things to take into consideration. What do you want to do with that information? Um, I know for the state of Virginia, we have online databases where we can go up and pull up some information for free on folks. So if you're, you know, your states may have online databases that allow you to look up that information. So I would suggest to you know, research and see what your state has that may be of um, benefit to you. So for instance, Virginia has a sex offender registry, right? So I'm able to go into the sex offender registry and plug in somebody's name to see if they come up. Or I can type in an address. So not necessarily just for the borrower, but I can put in the address of where I'm going and it'll pull up all the sex offenders who are registered in that area, right? So I'm able to see, okay, okay, this, my borrower may not be a sex offender, but who else? Is the next door neighbor a sex offender? Or, you know, somebody a couple streets over, are they sex offenders? So it'll actually ping them on the map. It'll have their name, it'll have a photo and their address. All right, then we have an online judicial database, right? So I can go in and put in somebody's name and it'll pull up traffic tickets, any type of criminal violations that they may have and what their dispositions were. So say for instance, if someone had an assault and battery charge, I'm able to see that, see if they were convicted, right? Guilty or not guilty. Um, just to kind of give me a background of maybe who you know, someone I'm dealing with. And if they don't come up, that's even better. That means what? They probably haven't gotten into anything, but at least most folks have at least had a traffic ticket, right? Most of us have had a traffic ticket, right? All right, but you can search general district court and circuit court for most of the counties in Virginia. Um, it shows that current and past charges and their dispositions, and it even shows the traffic violations, so that's a great tool. We also have um, inmate locators. Um, the Federal Bureau of Prisons is really awesome because it'll give me, so say for instance, if I was locked up at some point and I got out and now I'm buying a house, Right? It'll show me the history, so if they've ever been incarcerated within the federal system, it'll show up. The State Department of Corrections for Virginia website is not as great as that because it's only going to give me the folks that are currently in. Right? So what do people do when they don't know the answer to something? They Google everything. Now mind you, it's not the most reliable resource because I can put in Robert Jones and a million and one Robert Jones is going to pop up because it's a common name. but you may still be able to find some information, right? It's, I still wouldn't rule that out. But reading the newspaper, the newspaper, <laughs> we have a paper um, in Virginia called Gotcha. 
So anybody that's been recently like incarcerated has a mug shot, they'll be in the gotcha paper. So if you read the newspapers, word of mouth. So how many of you go places and listen to other people's conversations? I'm nosy, I'll admit it. So who else is nosy? <laughs> so one thing we learned um, in law enforcement, we were trained, we listen with both ears. What does that mean? I can be talking to you and I'm listening to somebody else's conversation all at the same time and I'm actually comprehending both, right? So that's something that, was tr that I had to train myself to do. Um, social media, so look at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat. So all of those things are great resources to look at when you're looking at individuals and you want to know a little bit about them. I do it for all of mine. So now that you know what you know, what are you going to do with that information? What do you think you're going to do with it? All of this is being done to put you at the best advantage, right? So you now have this information. So you can call the sign and it's like, you know, mm, this is not really going to work for me. Are they able to do it at this time? You know, or are we able to change the location? Can I meet them at a Starbucks? You know, are they okay with that? You know, again, I look at it like it's not really worth the 125 for me to put myself in danger if that's the case, right? So now that you have it, you have to weigh the risk and determine if the signing is right for you. And you're going to keep in mind that conducting this quote unquote background check is for your information only, right? And it shouldn't really, you know, be taken out of context. So people may have a checker pass, um, but they, some of us do make dumb mistakes in their youth. So when you make the call, what, are you, what information are you looking for when you make that call? So what can you detect from making the phone call? Who's in the home? Who else? You know, if, is the wife going to be present? Or is it just going to be the, the husband? I know because that's one of the things that makes me a little uneasy if it's just going to be me and another man at the home. You know, so I'll always ask the question, you know, is your, does your wife need to be present for the signing? Is it, you know, does she need to sign the deed? And they'll say something like, no, it's just me. I don't have a wife. I'm not married. Um, you know, so you're able to ask those questions to find out who else is going to be there with the signer, right? When you're uh, making the phone call, you're gathering information. What is the tone of the caller? Is it aggressive or friendly? Did the caller sound like they were, you know, on medication? Did they sound like they had had some drinks? Did they sound like they were on drugs? So you're able to detect all of that, um, you know, just through just by listening. You know, we always have this thing, hearing versus listening. Hearing is a sense, but did you listen, right? All right, is the caller aware that the signing is taking place at the specific date and time? And also the location, again, are they telling you, oh, we need to change this location, I need to meet you across the street. Why do you need to meet me across the street and you live here? You know, so those are red flags. And when you make that phone call, not only are you listening to them, but they're listening to you. So what is your tone when you make the call, right? Do you sound confident on the phone or do you sound like you don't have all the information that you need? So they can pick up on your vibe too. But are you calling and you have all the information and you're hitting the bullet points, boom, 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 boom. Yes, sir, we need to meet here at this date at this time. Any questions? So only those who, who, who have good intentions are going to feel comfortable approaching me because I am a no-nonsense person. And it'll come across on the phone and in person. Will there be pets? Something that used to happen to us all the time in law enforcement is that people always say, oh, he won't bite. He won't bite, you know, but you don't know. And so what I always do, I, that's one of the questions I always ask. Do you have a pet? Not only that, I don't, if I make a sudden movement, is the dog going to bite me? I don't know. So people used to always say, oh, my pet's not going to bother you. I don't even take that chance. I ask them to secure the pet during the phone call. When I call to confirm the appointment, sir or ma'am, if you have any pets, I do ask that you secure your pet. We also talked about in some of my other sessions as well, like where do you park when you go there? Do you pull up in their driveway? Do you park right in front of their house? From law enforcement, we never park in front of somebody's house. So I might park a little bit, you know, back. Another question, are you showing up on time? Or are you showing up early? So I like to show up early, right? So I like to see what's going on before I got to go into the house. Arriving at the signing location. Okay, so once you arrive there, before you get out of your vehicle, one of the things that we were always trying to do in law enforcement is let your window down and listen. Do you listen to what, because I want to hear what's going on in the community when I pull up. Is it quiet? because you want to hear what's going on. It may even be able to give you a location about where, where they are in the home, right? Because that may affect where you need to enter. But if you were to stop and listen before you go into the signing, you may be able to say, okay, hold on. Okay, this mm, something doesn't sound right in there. If you listen a little bit, were they yelling and screaming when you approach? Because you know that it's not going to be an, a friendly environment when you go into the house. So what's the environment like? Is it welcoming, calm, peaceful, or is it awkward, aggressive, unpleasant, unwelcoming? Is the home in disarray? Are they bickering with each other? Because I, me personally, have been at a signing table with a husband and wife. You can kind of tell that something's not right with them, and you can feed off of them. I'm like, okay, 
you know, so let me hurry up and do what I need to do and get out of their way. So, so during the signing, always go with your gut feeling. We always know that if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. You know, don't disregard that. If, it's, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Something's going on. So during the signing, you should look around the home. Do you see anything that sends up a red flag? What egress options are available? So you think, if I can't get out of the front door, what is my second option? You want to control the signing table. You want to be the person that dictates where you sit and how they sit, right? So again, I always have my back to the wall because I don't want anything behind me. So I always make it about, oh, don't, no, 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 I, this is what I need. So, you know, I need this to be here because this is gonna work better for my signing because that's gonna make the flow of the paperwork better for me. And I'm sitting there intentionally because that's where I want to position myself. Because while I'm there, I'm thinking about if something happens, how am I gonna get out of this house, right? But you should also be thinking of what your next move would be should an attack occur. So have you ever thought about that? What, what would you do had an attack occur? Sometimes we size up our opponents, right? And I will tell you, age has nothing to do with this. Some of the strongest folks I've dealt with have been older, okay? Um, you know, especially when we deal with mental patients, when they're off and off of their medications, they are the strongest folks that you can come into contact with. I had an 80-year-old lady bang her head in my vehicle on a cage for four hours while we transported her, nonstop. So they are strong, so please don't be fooled by age, okay? So again, you should have a plan of attack for everybody that you come into contact with. And making good eye contact also lets them know that you have a little bit of crazy. Right? I always tell my students when you're dealing with folks, make eye contact with folks because that stops a lot of things from happening. Most of the things that happen to folks is because they cannot identify who the perpetrator was. Things happen and they're like, well, well can you give us a description? Ah, I don't know. Because guess what we were doing as females, especially, we were looking at our purse. What is something that we all do now? We're looking down at our cell phones. We're not even looking up. So making good eye, eye contact, it lets them know that you're confident, that you're sure of yourself, and you're ready for whatever. So if they decide that today is the day that they want to mess with you, they're probably going to regret it. Because you're ready. You're mentally prepared. You're ready. And that's half of the battle, being mentally prepared. All right, and then after the signing. So after the signing, are you guys hanging around for the chit-chat? Are you packing up and getting your stuff and getting out of the house? Normally, when they're on their last few documents, I'm already packing up. I'm already gearing myself to get on up out of there. Try to position yourself so that the bars escort you out, right? Try to avoid someone being behind you, all right? And then you're going to pay attention to your surroundings while you're walking back to the car. Again, did somebody pull up outside while you were in the house? So anything that's different in the environment as you're walking out, you want to pay attention to. And then there's the big question, should you carry a weapon to a loan signing? What do you guys think? Well, because I was in law enforcement, I was allowed to carry concealed anywhere in the state. And so sometimes I have taken a gun, but it's not on my side, right? Because is anyone going to let you in their home with a gun on your side? Probably not. They're not going to do that. I know I wouldn't. You come to my doorstep with a gun, nope, door closed in your face. So you have to be mindful how you, ha how you carry it, where you carry it. You know, be mindful that, you know, there is a mindset that goes along with carrying a weapon. Just the fact that you're carrying the weapon, you've already committed to using it, right? Have you not? Because why are you carrying it if you're not willing to use it? And so you have to be mindful of that. And not only that, you've done all this background research and you think you know this person and you're like, oh my God, this, this person is scary. And you carried a gun and they make one sudden movement and you're all nervous and you shoot the person. Well, that's not going to be cool. Right? So you have to understand that there's a mindset that goes with it, and you got to understand your state laws. And, and my philosophy is because you're going into someone else's home, I try not to do the weapon thing only because I feel like I can defend. If I had to go to court for defending myself, I can say, you know what, I was totally at a disadvantage, and I did what I had to do for self-defense. Right? But if you go into someone else's home with a weapon, I don't know, depending on what state you're in, it can look or appear that you're coming in with an intent to do harm. And so you have, that's what I'm saying, you have to know your laws and have to understand uh, what your state law is. So, and you have to consider, again, that you're going into someone else's home with a weapon. Where are their kids? Where are their pets? Because I've had kids rolling around, and kids like to go through your stuff and mess with your stuff. And what happens if you have that gun in your bag and you're focused on the signing and the bag was on the table and the kid gets the gun? That's not going to be good. So you have to be mindful. So if you don't have it on your side, where are you wearing Where are you keeping it? Is it in your bag? Are you, you know, where is your bag? Is it on the floor? Is it beside you in a chair? So just keep that in mind. Um, again, how are you starting to carry the weapon? Are the um, borrowers comfortable or edgy with you carrying a gun? So if you are carrying a gun, are you going to let them know that you're carrying a gun? No, you're not. So 
what happens if you have the bag and the gun, you know, absolutely slides out of the bag. The bag is on the floor and they see it. Now, what are you going to do? <laughs> they know not to mess with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they know, okay, all right, well, let's hurry up and get this signed and done then. All right. But, uh, <laughs> then, you know, are you making it accessible to them? You definitely don't want it to be accessible. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys.